Okay, this is a big one today. Three rock solid tips to help you prepare for your maths GCSE exam. Tip number one. Now, this one might seem obvious, but you have to do the work. Okay, now bear with me because I know you're probably thinking, well, yeah, obviously, I know I've got to do the work, but not everyone fully understands this, not properly anyway. And I've seen many hardworking, conscientious students who spend a lot of time making beautiful notes and, you know, elaborate revision timetables. And I've got a lot of respect for that. There's nothing wrong with it. It's definitely useful. But it's not the same as getting your hands dirty and getting stuck in and practicing some actual exam questions. That is when the real learning happens. And I think that's especially true for maths. And the reason that's so important is because there's this huge gap between understanding something when you see it written in a book or when someone explains it to you and being able to actually do it yourself. You've you may well have already found that in school. You're, when your teacher explains something, you know, and you think, yeah, that makes sense, seems easy enough. Then you go to have a go yourself. Uh, you know, suddenly it seems a lot harder. Um, an analogy that I use is if you think of a song that you like, when it's playing, you can probably sing along to it. It feels like you know the song inside out, that you know all the words. But try stopping the song and see how long you can keep going for. And I mean literally try that. You know, do it as an experiment and see how you get on. Because I think you might be surprised how quickly it all sort of starts to fall apart. And so doing maths questions is exactly like that. There is a world of difference between understanding something when someone else explains it or when you read it in a book and actually doing it yourself. So tip number one get stuck into some exam questions. And there are loads of places you can get exam questions. If you don't have access to any, head over to my website, mathskitchen.com, where there are loads of free resources there to help you. And of course, I'll leave a link down below. Tip number two, focus on things where you feel you're learning. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say that you're working at about a level four and you're trying to get up to a level five. There's no point spending ages and ages practicing grade eight or nine questions. They're just going to get you worried because they'll seem impossibly difficult and you'll use a lot of your time trying to figure them out. On the, you know, on the flip side of that, if you're already close to a level nine, you probably don't need to be practicing level two questions. Now, having said that, and this applies, I think, particularly if you're doing a higher paper, you may find that you've come across some stuff that is technically at a much higher level than your target grade or is higher than the other things that you normally work at. But that for whatever reason you found, you just got on with it and you could do it. So maybe you found histograms easy um, or vectors or algebraic proofs or you know whatever it is. And if that's the case, brilliant, you should practice those. And it's great to have something like that in the bank. And I'm definitely not saying that, you know, for example, if your target is a level five, that you should never, ever look at anything higher than a level five. But what I am saying is that that higher stuff really shouldn't be forming the bulk of your revision. If, if for no other reason, it can just be demoralizing to work on things that you're finding far too difficult. OK, so how do you know what level a particular subject or question is? It's often hard to know, isn't it? Um, some textbooks or websites, including ours, will tell you what level a particular question is. But the truth is that those are generally educated guesses. They're a useful guide, definitely. But for the most part, there are no precise definitions, actually, of what each topic is. All right, so therefore, how can you gauge whether the work is about the right level for you? Well, my advice is that you want to be pushing yourself to doing, you know, slightly hard stuff. And by that, I mean stuff that you have to think about a bit. Maybe you need to go back and read your notes before you can do it or watch a quick YouTube tutorial, you know, and then practice a bit before you feel confident with it. So not stuff that you're having to puzzle over for an hours and hours to get one question and equally not stuff that you can just fly through without having to try. You want things where you feel you've learned something or improved in the process. Um, but that aren't insanely difficult. You know, you want that sweet spot. Um, and hopefully as time progresses, you can move on to harder and harder stuff. Um, so if you do a past paper, you'll know roughly speaking where that point is, where you start to struggle with the questions. Um, and 
you want to put in most of your effort there okay at again at our website we can help you with that because if you log in uh, still free um, every time you log in we can build up a more and more accurate picture for you and the questions you get will start to sort of be working it around that level we can see which questions you do really well which ones you do less well and we can start to hit you with just that right level okay so tip number two you want to be working on questions um, that are hitting you at just the right level right tip number three you need to know if you're making mistakes and if you are how to correct them so if you're doing past papers you need to either be getting them marked by someone or if that's not possible then checking them off yourself against a mark scheme uh, if you're working on my website mathskitchen.com or some other sites do it as well then you'll get your work marked for you as you go along so it's a great way to get that instant feedback particularly if your teacher is looking a little bit overworked as they may well be at this time of year um, i put up a couple of videos working through past papers um, and i hope to add more but there are plenty of others that have already done that as well and so they're a really good resource um, to help you with that and really this links to tip number two in that there's no point just doing questions you can already do and leaving all the ones you can't you need to go back and see how to do the ones that you got wrong maybe not all of them but you want to keep nudging along that place where you get stuck just a little bit at a time so it's painful and difficult and annoying but that is where the real progress will come from seeing what mistakes you're making or which questions you're getting stuck on and then correcting them or you know seeing how to do them correctly um, and then just practicing them a bit more so that was tip number three uh, final bonus tip then which is this start today it's really easy to fall into those traps of oh, I can't start yet because I've got to tidy my bedroom or I can't do it so I've got this huge revision plan finished um, or you know I need to wait until I've got a whole day free um, that I can put aside and really get stuck into it if you have a spare half hour get started now literally now um, and what should you do well obviously I've mentioned lots of times you can go to our website lots of stuff there but lots of other websites as well your school may well be signed up to a website um, or maybe you've got a past paper that you could do or even even better than that a past paper that you've done before and that has been marked and you can go back and try those ones where you got stuck and make those corrections um, so I'm not saying that doing plans and things like that is a waste of time actually you know it is a good idea to do that but really you want to be getting stuck into some questions and practicing it so that's it my three top tips well four really if you include that last one um, let me know in the comments below if you found this useful um, if you did then you know I can put another one of these up in the next few weeks right shut down YouTube switch off your phone go and do some revision now and I will see you next week for another video